Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at forming and solving equations. Now with this topic there are so many different types of questions that can appear, but hopefully this question here will give you a good overview of how you need to go about approaching this topic. Now before we get started, if you want to pause the video and have a go and then obviously watch along for the solution, you can do so, but otherwise I'm just going to show you where you can go to find more questions on this topic so that you can do some more practice. So when you're on one of these videos, if you click into the description, you'll see that I've got everything listed within there. I've got hard questions to try, I've got checklists and practice papers that you can download, and other questions and other videos within this series. Now if you scroll down to the bottom of the description, you'll see down there, it says topics featured in this video. So in there, I'll put all the links with difficult questions and topic videos related to this topic right there for you to access. So just click onto one of those and it'll take you on to more practice questions and different versions of this topic. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so looking at this question, it says here are two rectangles and we can see the two rectangles and they've got some algebraic and numerical lengths. It says all measurements are in centimetres and then it says the area of rectangle A is equal to the area of rectangle B. Work out the perimeter of rectangle B. Now when it comes to questions like this and particularly with rectangles we can look at forming equations looking at the side lengths. So for example if we had a different algebraic expression opposite the 4x we would be able to say that they were equal to one another. Or if we had an expression opposite this 2x minus 3 we could also say that they were equal to each other. But we don't have that scenario going on so we're not going to be able to do that but that is quite common when it does come to these rectangle questions. So we've not got that, but we have been told that the areas are equal to one another. So if we can get an expression for the area of rectangle A and an expression for the area of rectangle B, then we can set them equal to each other and solve an equation. So let's have a look. So the area of rectangle A would be 2.5, the height or the width, whichever way you look at it, multiplied by 4x, that length along the top there. So that would give us an expression for the area of rectangle A. Now 2.5 times 4, that is 10, so this would be 10x, and that would be an expression for the area of rectangle A. So there's our first expression. Moving on to rectangle B, we're going to do the same thing. We have 2.x, oh sorry, 2x minus 3, and we're going to multiply that by the 7. So if we multiply 2x minus 3 by 7, we have a 7 on the outside. I'm going to introduce a bracket here because we're going to multiply both of those pieces by 7. So I would write that as 7 multiplied by 2x minus 3. So, very quickly, I have put it in brackets there because I don't want to forget to multiply the 2x and the negative 3. Okay, if I was just to put 7 times and then 2x minus 3, I might accidentally just times the 2x by 7. I don't want to forget that. So I'm going to expand this bracket, which would give me 14x minus 21. So there is the expression for rectangle B. So now that we have the expressions for A and B, and it told us in the question that they were equal, just in this bit of information here, so I can set them equal to each other. So I can put the 10x on the left, or I can put the 14x minus 21 on the left of the equation, but it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to write 14x minus 21, and that is equal to 10x. Doesn't matter how we arrange them there, we're still going to get the same final answer. So it's up to you what you do next. We could add the 21 to the other side, or we could subtract the smallest x from both sides. And that's what I'm going to do, because it's always normally the first step that I take. So if I subtract 10x from both sides, I would end up with 4x minus 21. And as the right-hand side only had 10x there, that would just now equal 0. So all I've done there is I've subtracted the 10x from both sides. Now I'm going to add the 21 to the other side. So if we add that over, we now have just 4x on its own, and that equals positive 21. So there we go, we have 4x is equal to 21. To finish this off, I just need to divide by 4, and if we type that into our calculator, 
we get x is equal to 5.25. So there we go, we have our value of x. And we can just highlight that because that's obviously an important piece of information there. Okay, so in that solving the equation part, you can always write down what you did as well. We subtracted 10x from both sides, then we added 21 to both sides, and in the final step there, we divided by 4. So they were our steps to solving the equation. So now how are we going to use this x value? So the question said, work out the perimeter of rectangle B. So for rectangle B, we need to go about working out the perimeter. So to do that, we just need to think about any of the side lengths that we already have. Now we already know the height of it on the right hand side is 7. And opposite that is equal, so this is 7 as well. The top is 2x minus 3. The bottom will be identical to that when we have a numerical value for it. So all I need to do is to find the length of the top. That's going to be the same on the bottom. So the top there, it says 2x take away 3. So I need to do two lots of 5.25, our x value, and then take away 3. So if I type that in on my calculator, 5.25 multiplied by 2 comes out as 10.5, take away 3, and that gives us an answer of 7.5. So the top there is 7.5, and that's where we've substituted in our x value into that expression for the length. So if that's 7.5, the bottom must also be 7.5, and now we have all of our side lengths so we can calculate the perimeter. So I'm going to write my working out down for that. We have 7 plus 7 plus 7.5 plus 7.5, so that's 14 add 15, so that is equal to 29. It does say that all the measurements are in centimetres, so that would be 29 centimetres, and that would be our final answer for this question. Okay, so there we go. As you can see, there are different methods that can be applied for different questions. So this is just one method going over one particular type of question where we were looking at equating the areas and then using that x value to find the perimeter. But you could just as easily have a question where it said the perimeters are equal and asking you to work out the areas, things like that. Obviously just uh, incorporating these, uh, these, these equations here, but in slightly different ways. So there we go. Obviously, don't forget that I will link in the description all the different topics for this. So I'll put in the forming and solving equations video if you want to practice lots of different types of questions. I'll also link in all the uh, videos on sort of substitution and solving equations as well, if any of those steps through you at all. So there we go. I hope you found that useful and helpful. If you did, don't forget to like the video, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.